Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. It's the sixth of the month, which means it's time for Spellbinder Club Kit shopping. Now, of course, if you're already a subscriber, you did get a little bit of early access, but if you're new to Spellbinders Clubs, I wanted to show you what you can subscribe to starting today. So I have the clear stamp of the month, which has our little gnomes with their cup of hot beverage and books with adorable sentiments. I also have the small die of the month. I'm really excited to be joining that team with an owl and lots of book details. I also have the better press plate of the month. I will not be using this um, particular product for today's project. So check back later this month for that. And finally, I have the stitching die of the month with adorable books, teacup and floral details. Oh, also new. I am on the embossing folder of the month which I'm so excited. I love their, I guess, standard. They're not 3D. <laughs> I mean, they're all 3D, but it's the more standard embossing folder. So, so excited to have more to show you today. So I've done lots of die cutting. I die cut my stitching die of the month as well as my small die of the month. So let's get to assembling. Since I'm so excited to be on the small die of the month team now, let's start with that one. I did lots of die cutting out of some black, gray, blue, white, and a little red, some gold, and some cream cardstock. I know that was a lot of colors. I do have everything listed down below in my description box, but we will talk through it as we assemble. I didn't really want to add any distressing ink or any type of inks to my die cuts. I wanted to put it together just as is, but I'm going to make a fandom inspired owl here. I really wanted it to look like Hedwig from Harry Potter, so I am taking a little bit of tea dye distress ink and just trying to distress my little envelope just a bit. That's the only thing I'm going to ink up for this die cut assembly. And then I saw that you can put these two pieces together to create a little envelope. And then there's a really adorable kind of wax ribbon seal, which I think is so fitting for Spellbinder since they have wax seals. But I'm just gonna add the two pieces of the envelope together. And then I die cut the ribbon part of the wax seal out of red and then I did the wax seal out of gold. I probably could have just done all red kind of to be more on point with the movie but I thought having that gold seal with the red ribbon just looked really pretty so and it's you know fandom inspired. <laughs> so now I am learning how to put this owl together as I go along. I completely forgot to put in Hedwood's head wigs eyelashes so there are some embossed details so it's kind of nice that you don't need to put every single piece together to customize and have fun with these die cuts so while I did forget to do the eyelashes first that's okay there's still that embossed detail I did her eyes in blue first and glued those into the embossed openings for the eyes and then I added the black detail and then I actually die cut the eyes again out of more white cardstock because I wanted that little kind of glimmer of the eyes to be white. So I have, again, the blue already in the owl's um, indented or embossed detail of the eyes. Then I glued on the black and then finally that little white piece. I have a jewel picker just to help me with the smaller pieces. And then I also use the pointy end to kind of move things around before they're stuck down uh, to be able to get them in the right spot since I use liquid adhesive. Now I glued her beak down next and I wish I would have waited because I completely forgot that she's also going to be wearing a scarf and have an envelope in her mouth. So don't do that part yet. I also grabbed some scrap dark gray cardstock and I'm just going to use this to fill in the little holes, uh, feather details on my owl. So that way I could have the gray poking through um, without having to like paper piece all those little dots back into the owl. Now I'm gluing on her wings. I did do them in a dark gray and white just to create some shadow and detail for her wings. And I'm just following the intended design for the wings onto the owl. 
After that, I'll move on to adding in her little kind of feathers around the top of her head. Again, definitely should have put those on before her wings, but you know what? That's the beauty of liquid glue. It allows me a couple extra seconds and the ability to peel things up and glue them back down if needed. So next I'm going to realize that I forgot to do her eyelashes. You can see them still in my tray, but that's okay. I'll just save them for a future card. And then I'm gluing her little feet on. So now I will glue the envelope into her mouth. And again, shouldn't have done that because she's wearing a scarf. Now I'm going to do a blue gray and black inspired scarf because my house, if I were to attend Hogwarts, would be Ravenclaw. So I use those colors to inspire this scarf for this project. So I'm following the details. There's really like perfectly embossed lines for the details of the scarf to be added. And I'm going with blue and black with gray details. So just following those embossed lines again as the a scarf was intended to glue the details onto the blue cardstock and then I will glue the bottom or the end of the scarf where it's tucked under the neck part of the scarf. Uh, I'll glue those together and then you can see I've already peeled off the envelope off of my poor little Hedwig and now I will glue the scarf. So there was a little bit of details where I had to pull off the envelope. It kind of ripped the paper a bit that's not going to matter because I'm literally just going to glue that envelope right back in place on top of the scarf and tucked into her beak. That was a lot of work, but here I am putting it together for you first. So that way, when you get your small die of the month, you'll hopefully avoid the same mistakes that I am making. And that will finish off my adorable little headwig that I used from the small die of the month. Now there are some book dies in that small die of the month kit as well, but I wanted to bring in the stitching die. So I have again inspired by my house colors out of gray, brown, not brown, gray, black, and blue. And then I did a tan colored cardstock for the pages of my book. So one you see the spine and one you see the pages of the book. And I decided to use some Essentials Metallics Diamond Metallic Thread, which you can get from Spellbinders as well. I just use a piece of tape to hold the end of my string in place. And for this particular stitching die, I'm just making big loops around my book pages because it looks like kind of, you know, when you have the foiling on your book pages. I think that's the look that this kind of gives. I really like it. So I keep going around and around the book details with my thread on a needle. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to tape it in place again. I don't do any type of knotting on this particular design because there's so much paper to hide the string on the back side. I'm just going to use my clear tape to keep that all in place. And then when I glue it down, I'll just make sure that I, you know, cover any of that string when I adhere it to my card base to avoid any issues of the string getting loose. I'm going to add now the book details to my stitching that I just finished. So you could see the cover of the book is this thin blue piece of cardstock. So I'm going to add that down. And then there are two little details for the spine of the book that I will glue next as well. And then there is also a little bookmark. I thought about doing it in red. I kind of wish I did. I thought it would, you know, maybe give a nice little pop of color that matches the red of my letter in Hedwig's beak. But I just went with gray. Um, if I could change anything, I would change that smaller arch piece that I added to the book spine in red. Cause I feel like you kind of see that a lot in big old books like this is that red fabric kind of peeking out from the spine. But that's gonna finish off the first layer of our books. Now let's work on the second one. So this one has a lot more detail. I just do a back stitch for all of my stitching. Um, I don't, you know, nothing really fancy here. So I thread my needle and I'm gonna start on one end and I'll do a couple of stitches. So this has like a flower kind of look to it where you start in the middle and you go out. So, or vice versa, start out and go into the middle. So I'm literally just gonna stitch 
around and around <laughs> all around this flower detail and I'm going to do my best to make sure when I'm on the back I also go around the end of my string so it's just to help keep it in place um, that way I can do a small knot when I get enough of my thread through that the string won't come out and it won't move so you can see here I'm trying to wrap my end of my string underneath some of my stitches and now I will make a very simple knot so I'll go around one more time and then I will literally just do a double knot <laughs> your standard overhand knot to uh, tie that end of my string in place so here's one knot make sure to pull it nice and tug without ripping my paper. I will say that using a nice dirty cardstock for stitching dies is really important so you don't rip your paper. And then here you could see the second overhand knot. And that will just keep my string in place. I will trim that down so you can't see it poking out later. But now I'm going to finish that little flower or spiral detail on one end of the book. And then I'm going to do back stitching from that little detail down to the middle kind of flower spiral circular detail. So you can see here it's going much faster now that I don't have to worry about if my string is going to come out since I knotted it. And I'm going quickly around this little circle detail. And then now I, you'll see me start to back stitch. Oh no, I skipped the back stitch. Sorry. So I did back stitching. Um, and if you don't know what back stitching is, let me know. I'm sure you could search it right here on YouTube and you'll find lots of videos. But I went to the middle circle detail, went around that one, did back stitching up to the other end. And now I'm doing another overhand knot to end. Uh, a double knot to end this side of my string and keep it in place. Usually if there is not a lot of details, there's a lot of details on this book. You can see those kind of teardrop cutouts from the book. Um, I would just use clear tape to keep everything in place or even as a secondary measure after I knot it, but there's just not a lot of space for that. So I'm going to really rely on my knots and my glue to keep these in place. So there, the set comes with a detail for the book and then a solid kind of cutout for the book. So I use both with the blue cardstock and then just the solid uh, one piece out of gray. And I'm gluing these together to be my second book that I will put on my card. I'm using my magnets just to help keep those papers in place while the glue dries and as it's drying you can see I'm kind of playing with how I think my scene is going to look. I will have my little head wig sitting on the first stitched book that I did and then that will sit on the second book. So now that most of our focal point is done, let's bring in our embossing folder. Again, this is the standard embossing folder of the month, and I'm adding some water with my spray to my piece of craft cardstock, and I will place that inside of my embossing folder. I'm going to do my best to try to get it centered so the design looks even. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. It looks really cool either way, and we're going to have like you know, details on our card that will busy up the card and you won't be able to tell if your design is not perfectly centered. I'm bringing back my um, blending tools, but this time I'm going to use Vintage Photo Distress ink and I'm going to add ink all around the four sides of my embossed panel. And I'm also going to do a little bit of splattering. I'm going to use one of my Distress Mica sprays and I just took the nozzle right out of the container and I'm using that to splatter. It's going to give it a nice subtle shine. I love Mica sprays. <laughs> they add a lot to the card. Now that that's done, we can work on our arrangement onto this panel. And I know, again, I want my two books stacked and Hedwig sitting on top of the two books. So you can see my little happy hands. I'm really loving how this card is turning out. And my Hedwig is actually going to be a little bit to the right because I will also stamp one of my sentiments from the clear stamp and die of the month and die cut it out for this card. So I'm starting with some thinner foam. This is one millimeter thick foam. And I added it to the back of my first book and I'm getting that adhered to my Boss background. I'll repeat that process with my second book, stacking them on top of each other. 
And then I will also add my foam adhesive to Hedwig, but I won't glue her down yet. I need to figure out my sentiment first. So I will start, you know, pretending I'm gonna put it on. I did peel off all the release paper, but before I secure that in place, I'm gonna grab my sentiment. I'm going to emboss my sentiment in silver, but I will use a black ink for stamping so it will have a bit of a darker look to it. You'll see here as I get my misty ready with my white cardstock and my clear stamp. So I'm gonna grab my VersaFine in onyx black and I'm just gonna ink my sentiment up. I think I do it twice. Uh, that's the beauty of the misty is that I have the ability to stamp more than once. Um, and then I'm gonna use some chrome embossing powder. This is from Ink on 3, but any silver will do. And I'm using my heat gun to melt that powder down. So it does look like a dark silver. I don't know if it really matters using black ink, but I just really wanted it to match the silver, like the dark gray and black on my card. So that's why I did what I did. I did die cut around my sentiment using the coordinating die, and I also cut it again in another piece of white cardstock just to add a little bit more stability and sturdiness to this sentiment. I added that same foam adhesive behind my sentiment and now I can work on placing my little owl. So I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to her feet and get her onto the book, making sure I have plenty of room for my sentiment. And once she's attached to the card, I'll go ahead and then peel off the release, pa release tape for my sentiment and get that onto the card. Uh, my panel is just slightly smaller than an A2. It's four by five and a quarter, so I can have a white border around my panel onto my card base. I'm gonna grab my Scotch runner to get all of that adhesive on the back of my panel and then attach it to my top folding A2 card base in white cardstock. And that will finish off my card. I hope you had fun watching me put together a card for the March Spellbinders Clubs. Again, this is the clear stamp and die of the month, the standard embossing folder of the month, the small die of the month, and the stitching die of the month onto one card. I absolutely love how everything coordinates so well together. Don't forget that you can buy the whole kit and caboodle uh, product set so all of the things all of the month clubs and you can get a free bonus item with that as well thank you so much for watching i hope you'll click like and if you're new here i hope you'll subscribe and come back as always you can find everything i use down below in the description box thank you and have a wonderful day bye